deer, but what kind of deer? It's just a doe. I tied a fly yesterday, a hopper, and uh, uh, it was an okay fly, but I got a better idea. Starting with the same foam, a little different size hook here. I'm going to get a shorter, smaller hook, a very light, light shank hook. These things right here. That's a size 12. That's a very thin wire hook. So we'll start with this. This is going to be... You know, when I'm tying these flies, I'm thinking brim. But I in, usually end up catching more bass than brim. At least out of my pond. My test facility. All right, that's a nice small hook, and that's going to be a relatively good size uh, fly. Now, here's how the process starts. Fold this foam over. This foam is just the right size for my grasshopper. See how it's about the same length as the grasshopper? It's actually a little shorter, but that's okay. Now, it's weird how that grasshopper does not stiffen up. Hmm. But anyway... We're going to do this, it's all going to be on top of the hook. And the process is going to start with me trimming this thing down and then making a slice. We're going to pick the tail section and we're going to trim it down just like this. And then toward the middle of this fly, we're going to put a nice little slit like this. All right. That's my basic foam construction. Now what I'm going to do is take a toothpick and put it in here like this. And I'm actually going to glue that thing together. I'm going to embed that toothpick inside the fly and then tie the toothpick to the hook. So let me get my super glue, which I left open. That's never a good thing. All right. Oh, but it's still flowing pretty nice. And I'm just going to glue the back part of that foam back from the where I, where I split it. And I'm going to put this just forward of that foam so the point goes all the way to the nose and I'm going to wrap and hold then I'll have to get it off my fingers see yeah. alright I got it wrapped and it's beginning to set I'm going to take that excess glue off of there alright and then I'm going to cut Cut the toothpick. Break the toothpick. Oh man, it didn't break off clean. Alright, well it's got to be a clean break. So, there we go. Alright, now you see what I got here? Now watch this. We're going to thread up that hook. That toothpick, toothpick ought to help with buoyancy. I'm going to thread up the hook, even though it's not going to be in contact with much of the hook. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to build this the normal way. Alright, now we are going to capture that thing right in the slit. And we're going to put lots of wraps on it right at that point. Alright. That's semi staying put. I wonder if I can. Well, and then I'm going to start wrapping the body part of it so I can get some segments that are very much body like. 
we're going to get that second one and see that's still catching the hook now I'm going to go outside the hook with this next set go one more wrap come down this is tough it might be better to turn that thing around in the vise I think I will so I can get to the back half of it alright now I can finish segmenting the body keeping in mind that I gotta do it backward alright now let's deepen that one up a little make those a little tighter Okay. If you can see what I'm doing, but I'm walking that thread back. Now let's get one on the very end. Give him a cute little butt. Alright, we're going to go back forward. Nice little segments. Again, a couple more wraps. This one will go under one time, like that. We'll bring it back over. Turn it back around in the vise. Oh, did that break my string? Look at that crap, man. It broke my string. Boy, that hook is sharp. That's how you rethread it. <laughs> All right, we're going to pick up right where that line broke and then come up to the next one. And obviously, it's going to have problems rolling. That's alright. Now we're back to here. Now, everything's laying over just about like I need it to. Let me put the little wing section on. One little wing. Nice part is that this is going to be hidden down inside here. It's actually going to be latched on to the to the uh, toothpick. Let me get another black feather. A little black feather. There's one. Perfect feather. Kind of match it up with the other one. And it rolled on me. It needs to turn in, not out. Not that it matters a great deal. We'll try again. There we go. Same thing. Pull it down a little bit. A good portion of this stuff off. You know what I'll do is hack. I should have hackled one of those. Let's do that. Let's take another little feather, tie it in here, and run a couple hackles right in that area. Palmer, a hackle. Now I know I'm gonna have to come back and hit that glue hit that where it meets the hook with glue so it'll stay put okay there we go now that'll give me some when I bring this up to make the head that will give me some other little legs now I need my turkey feather these things here make wonderful legs 
the longer legs. I'm going to split this into three and three, I believe. Yeah. Three and three. See? And you take these. You don't worry about them getting out of line. It don't matter. Hardest part is getting a knot in this stuff. Feathers are amazing material. They are really strong. Alright. There we go. And broop. There you go. Tie this in. There we go. Nice little looking leg. Do the same thing with this one. Now I suppose there's a tool that could help you do this. I haven't invented one yet. Probably should. It shouldn't be too hard to create a tool that can do an overhand knot in feathers. Kind of like a crochet tool, probably a crochet needle. Oh, come on now, put it up there. Oh, jeez. I didn't get a good job on that one, but you know what? We're going to use it anyway. And that one goes on this side. Some of this stuff really gets cattywampus. That's my legs. Let me go ahead and cut some of this stuff out of here. Yeah, and I will give this some glue. Sandwich this together and hold it tight. is coming together real nice. Got some excess string here I don't want. Alright, there we go. Now we're gonna downturn the head on this thing. I forgot to tie off my thread. Hmm. Guess it don't matter now. It's inside there and all that glue probably ain't going anywhere all right let me pull this off so I can shape the head the way I want it what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that out right to the eye of the hook that it looks like a hopper it looks like a pretty reasonable grasshopper imitation probably gonna wish I put it on a bigger hook Darken it up. Use a black magic marker. See the top. Oh yeah, this is this is actually a pretty good. Let me go ahead and hit this one with some green. Nice lime green. I 
make him even more froggy looking. Or not froggy looking, grasshopper looking. Alright, that's good. And look at the bottom of this. Let me hit that right there with some super glue. Along that shaft of that hook. And just let that sit there and percolate. Now let's put an eyeball on it. One on each side. Eyeballs belong right there. Man, if you want your flies to look better, put an eyeball on it. Brings it to life. Look like a grasshopper, but it definitely looks like a bug. Just kind of covering up the yellow. And there you go. And my second, my third, fourth grasshopper for the season. <laughs> Long legs. Whoa. That's a pretty good looking fly. See if we can test my latest hopper. It's nice looking ball. Still got to make a couple of improvements though. Alright, let's go check out the pond. It'll be the first time I've fished in the morning in a while. No dogs, so maybe I'll catch some fish. I mowed it yesterday. Oh, dang it. Dripping in my car. On the hook. Oh, it looks so pretty. I was able to get a little closer to the edge with my mowing. Oh, I love this little pond. Represents a lot of work, though. Represents a lot of work. Just keeping it mowed is, oh, I guess it's not too much once you get it beat back. I think the feeder just went off. All right, we're going to start here and fish just a little bit, just a few minutes, just to test my fly, my new fly. Let me get out the fly rod and see what happens. There was the original version compared to the new one. See, I built the original head out on the hook 
I did that one a little more standard, but as you can see from the tying video, it's very different. Alright, I got just my one fly. Everything else is nicely tucked. I got my fly tied on and it looks good. It looks good. It looks very good. I can get control of my line here. There you go. That looks like a grasshopper. Wouldn't you say? I would. fish right there. That feed must have just gone off. Let's see if these fish will think it's real. I don't know how they couldn't. The dang thing looks real. Oh, here comes a bass. Wow. That's called being denied. There must be 50 fish right there. What is wrong with these fish? I think these fish over here, all they look for is pellets. And each other, the bass come in here to feed. They don't, they don't take the pellets, they take the little tiny fish like those chasing the pan. Right. Oh, there he is, boom, hey! There's a big sunfish, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for, big sunfish. That's what I was hoping to catch, and this is a good one. That's a good sunfish, lens clear, yep. Turtle coming to take an investigation. Look at these big old bluegill. There's a straight up bluegill, man. Look at that fish, good night. Well, the new fly works like a champ. Thanks for being the first volunteer, Fishy Fishy. You have a good rest of your day. <laughs> that one jumped on it just like it's supposed to. It knew it was something to eat and it came and got it. And it wasn't a pellet. All right, let's see if we can't catch number two. Maybe catch a bass. I mean, that, that's exactly what, boom, there he is. That's exactly what a grasshopper would do. It'd get out there in the water and then start swimming back toward the bank for all it's worth. Oh, I just had a bass come take a whack at it twice. Right before I started making my cast, so I pulled it away from him. I get up on this high ground, I can see the fish, so I know if somebody's coming up underneath it, sorta. Of. Boom, there he is. Another, that's a green sunfish, I'll bet. There's number two. I missed number, the first number two. A little bass grabbed a hold of it and I never set the hook. Oh, that was a green sunfish. I recognize the body shape and the bright yellow fins. Probably need to tie this. I believe this is a number 12 hook. A little short shank. Very light wire hook. Probably need to move up to one side, maybe a 10 or even an 8. But I don't think I have any 8s. I've been having trouble getting 8s. Right, there we go. Beautiful, smooth water. You know those fish can see it, so. A lot of times you just have to let it sit there, which I'm not real good about. I don't, it, even though I've caught some mighty nice fish when you're not paying attention because you're just letting it sit there doing something else, working on some equipment or whatever, straightening out your line and all of a sudden a big old bass picks it up. One of the bigger bass I ever caught on a, a popper 
fly rod popper. Uh, I made a cast and the phone rang, so I answered the phone. I was talking to my wife and I heard the <laughs> and my popper was gone off the surface, tightened the line, and sure enough, there was about a five pound bass on it. <laughs> That's out of Jim's place. Jim and Ron, both those guys are, both of them have passed on. Boy, I miss those guys. Come on, fish. Don't get a look at it. Oh, there he is. That must be little. That's a little bass. But whom there he is. <laughs> ah, there was a couple, three of them looking at it. Look at that fishy fishy. Yep. All right, bud. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Uh-oh, he's upside down in the weeds. They get their head covered. You throw it back out there. Do you know what I mean? They get their head covered and they just go limp. Let me get him. Oh, he's actually in the mud. Oh, there you go, bud. Whew, off he goes. <laughs> Lots of little bass in here. Fun to catch. I'm about ready to wrap this up. I didn't even eat breakfast today. Just had a cup of coffee. I guess that was my breakfast. Let's see if some super long distance casting makes a difference. My shadow's headed in the wrong direction, I'm afraid. Got the sun right straight behind me. Oh, look, there's a little bass. Oh, he's coming to get it. There are two of them. It's interesting how sometimes they just lose interest. <laughs> two of them paralleling it. That long cast. Out there in the middle of nowhere. Wonder if my buddy J-Mo fished this morning. He often does. She's got the same excuse I do. You need to exercise. So you go out and you walk the banks and you fish. And you go into work. He has an advantage of Somerville's not too far away from where he lives. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Got something looking at. Boom, there, oh, it's a little bass. Yep, little bass. Oh, he let loose, long distance release. That fish was probably about six inches long. Well, this pond is really marching down. It's about three feet low now. We got a good chance of rain all this week. Today's Thursday. 23rd, I think. Let's see. What is the date and time? I'm pretty sure it's Thursday. Now, right, let's see. Thursday, July 23rd, 8.48 in the morning. Ooh, I can feel that sun heating up the back of my head. Your war hat. Oh, there's a bass calling me way over there. <laughs> Just keep working it. Find that fish that wants to bite. They don't all like to bite, let me tell you. I do find it a little bit of an advantage to work water way out there. Push your equipment to as, as far as it'll cast. Just like that. See how I can work that before I get too close. Before my shadow gets to it. Oh, I can see a nice bass running right along that shoreline. Come on, fishy, fishy. He's sitting right over here. Oh, there he is. There he is.
Are you looking at it? You looking at it? Come on, fish. There he is. Oh. 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 Caught him right on the shore. Right on the shore, man. That was cool. Sight fishing. That's fun. That's a nicer fish. That's a nice fish. Oh, and he gets a long distance release. And I wrap it around my neck. <laughs> well, that's all I got to show. Should have used a stronger hook. That one's starting to bend out. That's why I lost those last couple of fish. That hook is starting to straighten out. It is too light. So, you go up to the next size, much stronger hook. Actually, I think I have some this exact same size hook, uh, but it's just heavier wire. That's the one I need to use. All right, that's it. Let's wrap it up. They do like to fly, which was what all I needed to find out. Tie fly, fish a fly, catch a fish. All right, let's get to work. Until next time, y'all be good. Bye.